and those were like really the expensive um uh, like masterpiece toys and mm-hmm. uh and then i had just i just really had to stop because it was getting expensive and i was <laughs> i didn't have the space for it yeah so i i told myself gotta limit only, coll- only collect <laughs> ghostbuster stuff yeah and stay away from the transformers and now I feel myself getting sucked back into Transformers. So yeah, it's like it's it's getting bad again. <laughs> Welcome back to Geeks of. Geeks of the Round Table. Yeah, sure. The Geeks of the Round Table, everybody. Um, like I was saying, this is right now the exclusive home of the podcast. Uh, really, really hoping to figure out a way to get it online to the other podcast uh, platforms because uh, that'll be really cool. Uh, but today, today we're actually talking about something pretty cool. We're talking about why were 80s cartoons so much better than today? Or were they? So today we've got Jeff coming back with us. What's going on, Jeff? Oh, keeping busy, feeling the heat, even up here in Canada. It's it's very, very hot and very, very muggy and very humid and gross where we are right now. So uh, just trying to stay cool, still working on cosplay stuff, but uh, I'm ready to talk about my childhood. Yeah, I see you've there. got and a little sneak peek behind you there, too. I right do, over yeah, here. yeah. I got the old 3D prints on the uh, the Peacemaker helmet there from the Suicide Squad. So we're going to yeah. start, uh, start in with that. I've already started in on the sanding on it, so it's going to be a lot of sanding, a lot of failing. And uh, I just ordered a couple of uh, a couple of cans of Krylon original chrome paint. I'm going to be mm-hmm. slapping that bad boy with after I get her all primed and sanded and all that j- junk. You uh, do you have a 3D printer? I don't know, but I've got a couple of good friends locally that uh, essentially just just charge me materials for the print. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. Zapit Props online uh, is is one. Uh, he's who printed that for me. He's going to print the gun as well. Uh, he does a lot of Fallout stuff, and it, his stuff is just. It's sickening. Like it looks so, so, so good. I mean, I saw the picture you posted on Instagram. That the print looks pretty good. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. His his, cos- his cosplay though, like when he three D prints and he does uh, a ranger, I guess from I'm not, I'm not a follow guy. I don't know, but whatever he's got going on, it looks really, really badass. So and it's oh, all his uh, who stuff. is it by any chance? Zap it props. Oh yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, I know yeah. who he is. Yeah. yeah, crazy, crazy talented guy. So oh, very cool. Yeah, and he lives on the corner for me. So. I, I didn't. I didn't realize. I didn't know he was from your. To be honest, I thought he was in the U.S. I didn't even realize yeah. he was in Canada. No, he's here in court. Very cool. Um, yeah. got a special guest with us right now. Um, for anybody that uh, is into the 3D printing community, you probably already know this guy. He's like, you, you got a pretty good following on Instagram right now. Um, Elton, what's going on, man? Pretty good. How's things I, going with uh, you guys? Good. I will always remember. I'm watching a. Uh, I don't know. I'm watching Bill Durand. I forget what he's building. <laughs> and uh, he pulls something out. And he's like, oh, yeah, Elton uh, Nerdy Views uh, sent this over to me. I forget what it was. I was like, wait a second. I know that guy. So what was it that you had sent Bill? I think I gave him a Ghostbusters name tag. Uh, uh, I think it was. Like the Durand name tag for him to get started on his uh, Ghostbusting career. And he finished everything perfectly so he did he uh he got the um spirit ghost trap and modified it and then if i remember correctly was it him that also redesigned it in 3d and rebuilt a fully smoke machine lights and everything one i think um he he got parts from like um i think it's sean charlesworth oh Uh, yeah on he yeah, untested, and yeah. He, he like he like designed he did design like a ghost trap, but he also designed like um, the pedal, which the spirit ghost trap doesn't come with. Right. Also, uh, that's what he did. He used the pedal from Sean's design. Yeah, yeah. I think he did that. I, I'm sure everybody could see you're a big Ghostbusters fan from the collection behind uh, behind you. Um, just to segue back into what you were saying earlier, maybe maybe I can try to edit back the, edit this back into here. <laughs> You know, my picture quality is going to be quite different at that point. Um, how many Ecto ones do you have? I have probably at least twenty different 
Ecto ones, different versions. There's a the little Lego one version over here. Oh, is that uh, Lego? I didn't even realize the first that was one Lego. that came out. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that looks pretty and good for a Lego. The little, uh, little diecast one here. Nice. And last forever. The woo, 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 oh, you yeah, had the transformer cool. when you were just and showing the transformer us. One. Yeah, yeah. That's very cool. The ecto -trail. Very very cool. Oh, and I love the slimer that comes with it. I didn't notice that before. That's oh, yeah. super cool. <laughs> and yeah. the rest. And that is are... the uh, Lego firehouse behind you, isn't it? Yes, that's the Lego firehouse. That's a super fun build if you can it, find it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure it's impossible to find now. I, I heard yeah. it sold out basically within hours of it coming out. It was it was a, a really like special design, I think, and yeah, it definitely sold out. A limited In, edition, I believe. Limited edition, yeah, mm. yeah. Definitely had limited it, production, I should say. Yeah. Um, let's get into the uh, the question at hand. Um, I'm pretty sure, now Elton, you correct me if I'm wrong, but by your fandom and your love of Transformers and Ghostbusters, I'm going to assume you're also a kid from the 80s. Yes. We are. Um, so let's start with your favorite 80s cartoons. Uh, what were you guys into when you were kids in the 80s? I'm not going to ask you how old you were, but, you know, what were, your, what, what were you guys into back then? Uh, so I have a holy trinity of cartoons from the 80s. It's real Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. Transformers, yeah. and Ninja Turtles. Okay, yeah. Those are my top three. And yeah. then right after that, it's Voltron, Robotech, and it was a very short-lived series called Mighty Orbots. I do remember that, yes, but that was very short lived. I don't even that know if was it was like a full season. Thirteen episodes. Yeah. And like the company that made it went bankrupt. Oh, right I did not that. know that. So Interesting. no more. So you can tell I love robots and I love transforming robots and I love robots that combine. So What about you? Uh I mean, I can't I'm not going to compete with Elton's list there. That's that's pretty great for for me in my childhood. The only way you could be a cooler kid is to have more GI Joes or Transformers than the other kids. And I remember distinctly, and I'm and I'm sure this is going to come up a lot here, but the God, I wish I still had it. Uh, I remember having Skyfire, the diecast metal version of Skyfire. It it, it stood about this tall, fully transformed. Uh, the Autobot plane, which was look, just looked like a Robotech piece. It was like a complete ripoff of a Robotech piece. But um, I remember having that, and it was my absolute pride and, and joy and such. And it never occurred to me at the time that, that the cartoons were just vehicles to sell toys, of course. Now I know that, but and, and how that came to be and why that came to be. But back then, yeah, was there anything better? Been Saturday morning cartoons, and that that one two punch of, of Transformers and GI Joe was just everything. And I, I was such a giant Robotech nerd. I loved Robotech so so much, and the Macross and everything else. And and I, it's amazing I never got into anime because I because I didn't, and I still haven't. But man, Robotech was everything to me back in those days. I mean, that was technically early anime, wasn't it? I mean, it was. I mean, it's not anime in the sense that what anime is today, but um, I feel like, you know, Robotech, Macross, Transformers, a lot of these cartoons that came from Japan, especially in the style, Transer Z, Voltron, like they all had that very heavy, you know, anime type style, even though it didn't, like I said, it was a little bit different than today, but yeah. Um, for me, it's simple. I mean, I'm a Transformers kid. Transformers was my life. I had so many Transformers, it's silly. Uh, I had a mint original Transformers Prime into my 20s uh, until my mom sold it at a garage sale for $2.50, and I thought <laughs> I was going to throw up. Uh, oh, that hurts. It, that it hurts. does hurt. It does hurt. <laughs> that guy uh, skipped on his way home, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was complete, right? I had the fists. I had the gun still. I had um, a, a mouse? No. What was the name of the buggy? Roller. Uh, sorry? Wheelie. Roller. 
Roller. Oh, was it Roller? Yeah. So I had Roller. There was a little attachment that went onto Roller. I mean, I had it all. All the stickers were still mint on Prime on the trailer. Uh, yeah. And uh, she sold it for $2.50. <laughs> uh, now, I mean, I Saturday mornings came along. I, w I loved Thundercats. I loved Silverhawks. I loved G.I. Joe. I mean, I, I was into it. I mean, the Saturday morning cartoons were the thing, right? Yeah. Um, sure. Back he then. Man, like, I mean, come on, man. There was so, so He Man was one I was. I mean, I was into He Man. I mean, I've seen every episode of He Man, but um, I would record Transformers. I would record right. Thundercats. <laughs> Right, you know, right. I would VHS them so I could rewatch them during the week, right? Sure. Actually, when I when we first got our VHS machine, we didn't have cable back then. I, I want to say it was probably seven or eight, and my grandmother would start taping the Saturday morning cartoons for me, and then she would send them over, and then I would have four or five hours of of cartoons that I could just rewatch all week, basically. So I would rewatch the same episode non-stop but you know it was always the same shows every week over and over again uh and that's really what got me hooked into well transformers like i said i had so many transformers toys that was my thing star wars toys so that's that's where i was star wars toys so that's where i was kind of going uh, with earlier like this this whole thing is because of star wars toys right we we get the gold star wars age. toys started it all that's what i'm saying really? we get the golden age of television cartoons in the 80s because you know, Star Wars hits in 77, it's a huge hit. Kenner releases the first line of Star Wars toys in 78 and can't even keep up with production to meet demand. And so 83, G.I. Joe comes along, made by Marvel to tie in with toys and comics. And then 84, Transformers comes along to tie in with the Hasbro toys. It was different than Star Wars because Star Wars came out first and then and that helped to sell the toys. But of course, with Transformers and G.I. Joe and a lot of those, it was the inverse. The toys already existed. The cartoons were just a vehicle to sell the toys, which you're actually not allowed to do anymore on television. You can't market directly to children <laughs> within the TV. But back in the 80s, we didn't care. You could do whatever you wanted. So G.I. Joe was a really good example. G.I. Joe was a product of Marvel Comics, and it was their production TV division. It was a three-pronged attack, as they said. It was a television show, um, uh, the, the comic book, and the toys, all a marketing trident of, of taking advantage of little kids' uh, money and, uh, and, and time. So, I mean, most of these cartoons were only there. That's the only purpose is for them to be – because I'm pretty sure even back in the 80s, you weren't allowed to advertise the kids, but you were allowed to make a cartoon that then had merch, right? That, that You yeah. could make transforming robots on TV and then sell the transforming robots. You just yes. couldn't make a commercial to kids say, hey, you want to go buy this, this transforming robot. No, you weren't allowed to do that. But, yeah, let's make a half an hour, 25-minute cartoon, and that's what's going to sell our product. And that's the only reason we got any of these cartoons. But, man, did we get some epic part cartoons back then. I mean, nowadays, you watch, you know, I've got all of the Transformers on DVD. And you go back and watch them, and it's like, eh, you know, some of these were freaking kooky as hell, and they were kind of silly. And But back then, they were the shit. They really were. You look at cartoons today, kids barely watch cartoons anymore. Kids will stick to one cartoon, and then they'll rewatch the same cartoon over and over and over and over. My daughter has watched so much Dora, you know, when she was a kid. <laughs> I mean, I don't even want to hear Dora's friggin' voice anymore. I, I, you know, but back then, we had so many different cartoons we were into. It was crazy. Why was that? What's the difference between back then and now? Why was cartoons back then such a big thing? And today, eh, kids don't care about cartoons. They don't care about the toys anymore. There's way more other stuff to do now. That's mm -hmm. the problem. There's so much... Like, back then, there was just, like, regular TV channels. Not a lot of people had cable TV, you know? There's barely any internet, okay? Uh, video games were Atari, early Nintendo, mm -hmm. No, Now, there's just... Uh, a plethora of just everything, and now there's YouTube and Twitch and yeah, exactly. You know, there's too much the PS5 for kids to do. and the Xbox and the Switch mm -hmm. and Netflix and Disney Plus and Cell phones. phones. Damn phones! I mean, <laughs> yes, I mean it's crazy, and it's all on demand now, right? Like everything is is at their fingertips. They want to watch a show, 
they can watch a whole season of a show in a week if they want to. Yep. Back then, we would wait all week, excited. Okay, so here's my theory. What would we do all week when we're waiting for that next episode of Transformers or G.I. Joe or Ninja Turtles to come out? When we talk to our friends about it, we play with the toys. Yep. You played with the toys. Right? You played with your Ninja Turtles, you played with your G.I. Joes, you played with your Transformers, and then you, you know, impatiently waiting for Saturday morning to come along for that cartoon to show up. Nowadays, kids, they don't have to play with the toys because they can just keep watching seasons of shows nonstop whenever they want. That's my theory why you're seeing toy sections now at, for example, Walmart shrunken down to two aisles. When before you went into Walmart and you had endless aisles of toys toys r us in the u.s is now shut mm -hmm. down now luckily toys r us still exists up here in canada it's changed a little bit it's not as um it's not the same it used to be but still um where do most people actually buy their toys in in the u.s elton right now like if you have kids and your kids are into toys or if you're a man child like i am and you you know you like your toys where are you going to buy them back then now now um a lot of people do it online uh i've been getting stuff from target and walmart just getting lucky and finding stuff uh that just comes out um and they actually have like a lot of like just walmart and target exclusive toys now that and like GameSpot exclusives mm -hmm. and, and it like it really kind of throttles the market that you have to go to one specific store to get a specific toy, a specific ter version of a toy. Uh, but like, I, I know like back in the eighties, it was like my mom would go to century 21 to buy like, like a transformer for me. Zellers. Uh, yep. And Macy's. Macy's. Kmart, yeah. Wolco. Yeah. Kmart, Wolco. Your... Yeah, you yeah, could go yeah. anywhere and buy toys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, I'm going to play devil's lucky. advocate here for you, Jay. I'm going to just mention, I'm just going to throw it out there. You guys can discuss amongst yourself. Funko Pops. Are Funko uh, Pops now the modern collector's type thing? Well, you get okay, the same so... type of thing happens, right? You get rare ones. You get limited series ones. You get con exclusives or this exclusives or that exclusives. If you've been to a major comic book convention like I have, when you go to either New York or San Diego or, or Fan Expo, there are racks and racks and racks of Funkos. And sometimes you have to buy a ticket to line up to get in to get to the exclusive Funkos. So are Funkos now the modern equivalent of your classic collector toys from the 80s? So I think there's a distinction there that you just made is that Funkos are collectibles, right? My Transformers in the 80s weren't collectibles. They were my toys. I would play with them every day. My G.I. Joes and my Star Wars figurines were my toys. I would play with them every day. What I have here behind me are no longer toys. These are collectibles. Yes, I agree with that. And yes, I agree that probably more people buy collectibles now than there are people or kids that buy toys. Collectibles, I think, are a bigger thing now than traditional toys. I will give you that. Uh, but I feel like the major difference is back then they weren't collectibles; they were toys. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but well, I'm curious to hear from Elton because he's clearly the the guy for this <laughs> one. So, so I actually do collect some Funko Pops. Yep. I have like the Ghostbuster Funko Pops. I have the Transformer ones. Um, I have the Ninja Turtle ones. Uh, a couple up and here. I, and I absolutely do think they're collectibles. Uh, and I think, but I. I don't. I collect them because I like the 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 franchises Franchise. that they represent. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't line up at the Funko line to to get them. You know, at a convention, uh, if I see something I like, I'll get it. And in my opinion, I think they're the new they're the new Beanie Babies. Like if you if you're getting them. To make money off of them, you're going to be in a rude, in for a very rude awakening. <laughs> <laughs> the market, the market for P Funko Pops is very, saturated? I would say, saturated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there are just you, so many. Do you feel like, to JS's point, in the late '70s and, and throughout the '80s, 
it, it was kind of like combo collectors back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Nobody knew that these things were going to be worth a disgusting amount of money later in life. So, of course, you took them out of the package because you were a kid and you played with them. But is what's happening now a natural progression from that? Once people started to realize there's fewer and fewer of these things, and, you know, it's a, it's a simple supply and demand thing, right? There's very, very limited supply on some of this stuff. So the demand goes up and up and up. And you're seeing toys that are selling for tens, hundreds, thousands of dollars. Is that a natural progression then? Is that where you end up? Because it's been around for so long. And most of these toys, like I said, if I still had my Skyfire today, I'm sure that Skyfire is probably worth hundreds of dollars. But I don't have it. It's so long gone. I couldn't even begin to tell you where it was because I played with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's what yeah. it was. But the progression now is... Do you open all your stuff? You just said yourself, JS, you got some collectibles now. And I'm sure Elton's got some collectibles now. You're never going to open those. Those are there for your collection. It may still represent the fandom that you enjoy, because I'm like you guys. I have a handful, and but it's all from fandom stuff I enjoy. But none of it's open. It's just sitting there. I have to dust them off every now and then. I'm not <laughs> playing with them. So where does that, where does that, is it, so to your point, are there still toys that people just play with, or now have we morphed into just everything's a collectible now? I think it's really up to the collector, honestly. Like yeah. I have, I have both. I have stuff that, like here's a a Gozer, uh, can... Ghostbusters Diamond Select that's still in this. Yeah, yeah. Like it's still unopened. Yeah. Uh, but I have other Ghostbuster toys that I have sitting out, uh, like standing, you know, uh, it's, it's not on a shelf behind me. It's on a shelf. Yeah, right no, there. no, 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 I get you though. But it's like, and I think it's like, I have, I have those still in there because they're easier to display that way, like on the wall. For sure. <laughs> and I don't need it to have it on a shelf. Uh, right. and I'm, never going to sell these. I enjoy having them. That's 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 how I feel about it. Of course. And uh, I think a lot of people are collecting to make money off right. of this stuff. Sure. Uh, and that's that's perfectly fine for them. Um, and like just like to go back a little bit, there was this Saturday Night Live sketch about like it was like a, a toy commercial and like a collector was talking about i'm gonna buy three like one to open up and play with one to keep on the shelf and one just in case and <laughs> just in case i need to sell it <laughs> yeah exactly and that, that that's that's the kind of thing that kind of um i think kind of ruins the market it's like people who of want course. it can't get it uh and like this guy over here has three of them like sure. Uh, yeah. It's like, but I still think people are free to do what they want to do with their toys or collectibles. You know, that's yeah. I think you know. To, I think Jeff, what you're trying to say is completely valid, and I guess I think that the today's modern collectibles has have morphed into, you know, yesterday's toys. Most toys you're right today are collectibles, but I feel like that's a product of toys being aimed at like us most of the toys aren't aimed at the kids anymore because kids don't play with most of these toys anymore they outgrow them so fast that by the time they're into the more complex toys they don't want to play with them anymore so they become collectibles right so we're back then we would buy transformers and play with them kids don't play with transformers today right when the transformer goes up for sale it's not for kids it's for me and you. Well, <laughs> They're trying totally to sell for, to me no, and you, no. right? It's totally for nerds like us, 100%. The supply and demand. We, we are the demand. There's there's no question there. What what they're selling is nostalgia. Of course. Okay? Of course. And nostalgia yeah. sells. It absolutely does. Yeah. Because we have the money. <laughs> yeah. We well, have the disposable the income. Key. Exactly. We're the ones with the money. The kids don't have money, yeah. right? No. And... and uh, Look at a lot of the re- reboots we're seeing today. The new Netflix Transformer. Have you guys seen the new Netflix Transformers show? I caught the first season of it. Oh, you uh, got you got to watch it. Um, the third I, it's season on my just list. Came out. Yeah, it's third season was a little bit weird. Um, 
watching the first two seasons in my mind, it fully connected to the show we watched as a kid. Um, the second season ends with the Ark crash landing on Earth, essentially. Okay. Um, so up to the end of second season, it's completely a prequel of exactly how I imagined the original Transformers would have happened, right? Before we got what we got, that's what it was. But then they get into season three, and then season three brings on um, Beast Wars Transformers. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it interjects the Beast Wars Transformers into this new show. Problem is, is they don't fit within the Beast Wars Transformers timeline. So the Beast Wars Transformers timeline already had their episode where they find the original Transformers and the Ark, and they're these big giant robots compared to them because they were big giant robots. Mm -hmm. Now they show up on Earth, and now they're interacting with these characters that didn't happen in the original shows. They're not the big giant robots that they used to be when the original shows were out. So now it's broken continuity for me. So the third season was a little weird in my mind, but the first two seasons were amazing. Jeff, if you were ever... A Transformers fan, you got to watch those. It, it's the animation style is wicked, but it's still it's still the G one generation one characters and, and and designs, but in a new animation style. It's yeah, it's fantastic. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Why would they not capitalize on that? Why would Hasbro not turn around and say, you know what, Netflix comes out with a brand new, they're gonna actually pay? To make a commercial for our toys and put out a bunch of toys. Like, why would they not do that? Well, that's what I was going to say earlier is I think what we found, especially in our innocence, is that the shows ended up transcending the toys because a culture built up around the shows themselves. I don't need the toy to feel nostalgia about watching Transformers and G.I. Joe and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And, and that's why you're seeing all these. What have we gotten recently? Transformers movies, G.I. Joe movies. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, there's another TMNT movie coming out. Those keep coming around, not just to sell merchant toys, although that's also what they're trying to do, but because a culture grew up around the shows themselves, even if the shows seem to be vehicles. Because the three of us sitting here watched those shows as kids, not having any idea that that's what those shows were supposed to be doing. We didn't know there were vehicles to sell toys. We just loved the shows. Mm -hmm. And so exactly what Elton said, nostalgia sells. Even if it's just me buying a movie ticket to go see the movie, or a t-shirt that's got something on it or whatever, like I'm wearing my Captain America t-shirt today because I watched the Avengers, but because I collected the comics back in the 90s and the 80s and such. So yeah, it's it's all, sometimes the culture can transcend the, the, the merchandise and the material products. So you and me and Elton can sit around and, and be nerds about Transformers without going rushing up and buying toys. He, he said while looking You're at right. that, cool Transformer toys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was exactly the point I was going to make. Like, you're right, but I mean, if Netflix or, or if Hasbro did come out with the Netflix, Netflix version of all these to of these cartoons, of these Transformers, and they were nice toys, that's my only issue is when you look at the Transformers today, they're not like they used to be. They're very plasticky and they're very cheap and they don't transform well like they used to and they're, they're not the same. But... If Hasbro actually came out with some nice Transformers toys to go along with that Netflix series, you don't think all the Mies and Eltons and, and all the nerds of this world that love Transformers wouldn't jump on those? The Would quali you, the if, quali if a quality Transformer Optimus Prime from the Netflix show Season 1 came out, tell me you would not go out and buy that toy. Oh yeah, I would buy that. Point. What's point available now is this like small plasticky thing that I'm not fond of the transformation like I mm -hmm. did for the season one I bought uh, it was a it was a G1 repaint of that prime so it, it looks like right. the cartoon prime from with the, the shell seating and everything show. yeah 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 yes. and that one looks great uh, I think his his uh his vehicle mode isn't that great, so I just keep him in robot mode. So and that's perfect. <laughs> so yeah, cooler that way anyway, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but I th I think a lot of this is just it's just bottom line for like these companies, of course. Hasbro, like producing producing uh, a television show is expensive, <laughs> and 
where they cut corners is pretty much the toys. They their assumption is they're going to make a lot of these, and they're just going to pump them out to like the kids who watch the show, uh, and our, like our market isn't going to pay attention to that stuff. We're looking at like uh, the Japanese made stuff, like the masterpiece Transformer stuff, uh, mm-hmm. and like third party Transformers that uh, kind of are illegal, but uh, they don't have any Transformers or Hasbro, you know, branding on them. So right. technically, they can sell them, uh, but those things are expensive. But you know our generation is the ones that, you know, are spending money on that kind of toy slash collectible. And that brings me back to what I was saying earlier. Like, our kids even playing with... Like, I don't... Like, again, I don't... When I go to Walmart and, and, you know, like I said, Toys R Us in the States is closed now. And you go to Walmart here and there's... If if there's an aisle of toys, that's even... We're lucky. Uh, what, What happened? Why are kids not playing with these toys why are these why are stores not selling toys anymore well exactly Is it that the kids aren't playing with the toys anymore yeah, or no, are the kids not playing with the toys because there's no more toys available no no no. it's what it's what Elton said it, it, there's there's too much distraction now for them who's what kid is gonna are you are you gonna be 12 and sit there and play with just a, a plastic toy no. or are you gonna, old, you're playing on phones of course you're gonna be on your phone or you're gonna be on your computer or laptop and you're gonna be streaming your coolest shooter or game or, or minecraft or whatever it is that you're doing so yeah there's just there's just no way um like elton said and what, what you said they're, they're making this stuff for us and they, there are higher end toy lines like you can go to like mcfarland and, and get like very intricate detailed toys in those but again those are niche too right so yeah, it's got a sideshow and hot toys yeah. and yeah all the really expensive ones yeah 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 which and you guys said it i mean they're marketing that stuff to us it's not we have we are the key demo we have the disposable income to be able to go out and buy that stuff and yeah sometimes they'll twist the nostalgia thing and sometimes it's based on i mean well i have a buddy of mine that was big 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 into the mcfarland world of warcraft toys because he played lots of world of warcraft that was his whole life was playing world of warcraft so he had the whole set up and then he moved to starcraft and he had to buy all those toys too and and those were not cheap toys to get they were very very expensive they were gorgeous and uh and highly highly detailed but that's that's not a kid playing with a toy that's that's nerds like us with disposable income and good jobs that want to either relive our past or, or see something cool that's that's currently in our present but that's a that's a i mean if you if you by your reckoning if you put out these really really expensive transformers toys and then the show bombs and then you've got all this money sunk into putting up these incredibly expensive toys that nobody's buying because the kids aren't buying them because they don't have the income and we're not buying them because we're not watching the show well <laughs> now you've wasted even more money yes yeah, it's just not in there like ellen says the bottom line right it's not in their best interest to do that crank out cheap shitty toys that if they buy great and if they don't well they'll be in a landfill somewhere but it didn't cost us that much to produce them so yeah i do think kids are like buying a lot of like marvel stuff like marvel figures like there's always an iron yeah there's always iron man figures always captain america figures and like with new movies coming out i always see shang chi figures i have a few of them (laughs) of course uh and like Going forward, like, uh, I always, and I always see, like, only a few left when I walk down aisles uh, of, like, Target or Walmart for those, like, uh, for those products. So, like, people are buying that stuff. And it's the I lame just, background characters that you're seeing there. It's like Martin Freeman's character from yeah. like, Civil War or something. You're like, yeah. why is that even a... Uh, and, uh, and, like... Yeah. Like Mandalorian figures, like yeah. um, like the other Star Wars stuff. There's not a lot of Star Wars stuff either now, right? I mean, you go down the aisles, there's barely any Star Wars stuff at all anymore. It's it's mostly what I see is Mandalorian stuff because that's what's popular. Yeah. And yeah. from what I what I see, it's never like the Mandalorian figure. It's always no, it's no. always it's, it's like Jeff said, it's always like a background character. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Are we, um, you know, with our generation getting 
Well, we're not getting any younger, guys. I mean, I think it's obvious. Um, I am. Is our generation... Well, this great, giving it you away. You are, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elton, Elton looks yeah. way Elton. better than you and I do. Yeah, I'm for sure. I'm kind of a little bit pissed off about it, I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> he sounds like our age, but he doesn't look our age. Are we, are we heading towards the end of the toy, like the cool toy collectible era are we are we no. getting towards the end of it like is no. the next generation going to be into it like we were like we are i'm i'm 100 deferring to elton on this one because he's, he's the, he's <laughs> I can't the guy speak, for this i can't speak for the next generation The like they're not they're they're into so many other things that it's it's hard to say, honestly. Like I have, I have younger friends who do collect, uh, like, like old video games, uh, and that's that's kind of what they're into. So it's like, you never know what somebody's going to be into. And that's fair. I mean, everybody's into different stuff, right? I mean, that's that's what, that's the beauty of it. Uh, Jeff, no thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've got, I've got some, but uh, y yeah, I, you're probably right as far as future generations go. Uh, I think as long as we're around and, and, and those, those kids that are products of the 80s and, and even into the 90s are around, um, I think there's going to be a market for it. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, shout out to Snowhawk Cosplay, if he's watching this, he's got a, a separate channel called Tales from the Collectorverse. He is a massive gi joe fan he built a shed a bunker in his backyard to house all of his gi joe stuff and he just sits out there in the bunker playing with his gi joe stuff so uh as long as there's geeks and nerds like us to to fuel it i think it's absolutely gonna uh gonna continue but as soon as we're out of the way and it comes to our kids unless we will the things down to them and they somehow see a value in keeping them. Our future generation is going to be buying those and collecting them. Probably not. Uh, again, other than the Funko Pops, which I think Elton's got a good point. They're just going to be the next Beanie Babies because the, the market is so oversaturated with them. But And those are and one maybe of those things that I'm be, sure is going to come back, right? Like, there's I mean. always going to be another thing. Yeah, there'll be another after. thing after Funko Pops. No, 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 you're absolutely yeah. right. You know, high school brats or whatever the, whatever the hell the kids were collecting there for a while. But um, yeah, I, I think that the age of the physical toy is probably going to, to die within a couple of generations. I, I don't think you'll see that anymore. It's all going to be digital at that point. And, and it's unfortunate, but I mean, it, it is what it is. Comic books are going to be going the same way. And I was a massive, massive comic book collector. I still have over 2,000 comics that are sitting in my basement here. And, and they're going digital slowly but surely. And, and you're going to get to a point where they're not going to be available anymore. And they're not going to be collected anymore. That's coming very quickly. Be, yeah, so it's all Very going that way. It's all going a digital way, and and I mean, this is that's just modern technology. This is where it's going. So let's let's enjoy it while we can, I guess, and keep playing with the stuff. Is uh, is that fact affecting? I mean, I'm sure it's affecting somehow, but let's say how is it affecting the cartoons that kids are getting today? Like, if you look at the cartoons today, very few cartoons are just mindless cartoons, like they were back in the day everything has to be educational now everything has to have a message now everything has to you know have a purpose they didn't they don't have just action cartoons for the sake of having action cartoons like we did in the in, back in the days do you think it's kind of an evolution of or a response i guess to that fact that kids today there's so many other things to do that they're not going to be into the toys anyway so they're not making those cartoons anymore is that is that why like cartoons today are animated you know stuff i think what i watch is directed at us like exactly like archer uh oh my god i love archer so much um so great anything that comes out of like pixar or disney yes bojack like, horseman uh, mm -hmm. f is for family uh you know take take your pick any of those animated shows are clearly uh, aimed at us right yeah, and even like the lower like and animated stuff like South Park, that's oh, still yeah. all at us. Oh, for sure it is. Absolutely. Like and anything that's directed at kids, like it's so like uh 
what is Peppa the Pig and like mm. Dora. That's like yeah. stuff that's so esoterically very simple, I guess. Easily but digestible. Absolutely. Like easily, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> to be fair, Disney Junior has done a pretty good job. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have kids, so I mean, I've had to go through all this and Disney Junior has actually picked up the ball and has had a lot of good cartoons over the years. You know, the Doc McStuffins, the Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Uh, you know, they've they've had a lot of of good content for kids. Let's put it that way. I just feel like nothing that has been a toy a toy seller like we've had. Right? It, it's mm -hmm. mostly about passing a message versus selling a toy and and, and I, I guess it all comes back you know to what we were saying earlier about there's just too much to do for kids these days entirely um i i, I, I want to go back to reboots for a second have you guys watched any of the reboots of the shows that we were watching like there's been a uh thundercats reboots there is a uh there's a he-man technically not a reboot a he-man continuation mm -hmm. uh it's not a He-Man continuation. It's a new Masters of the Universe show that doesn't actually focus on He-Man, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep that for the discussion here in a little bit. There's also a second Netflix He-Man show that the trailer just came out this week. Uh, this one is actually called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, which is like a Fortnite graphic type He-Man in space that has a completely different look. Characters are all kids. Uh, like, Have you guys watched any of these things yet? I watched the the He Man continuation. Uh, Revelations. Yeah, Revelations. I I enjoyed it. Yeah. Like I I didn't stress too much over He Man not being really in the show. I was kind of surprised at some of the things that happened in the show. Mm -hmm. So that kind of impressed me. Uh, yeah. But it's not something that I like. I I'll wait for the the next what is it five episodes or whatever um, the second part yeah the second part uh and i'll watch that um there was a there was actually a he-man reboot like earlier this century in like 2002 2003 or there something was. like that that was i i enjoyed that one a lot did you that really one, eh yeah, yeah yeah and that was like on like cartoon network or something yeah uh, that was way before like any of the streaming netflix stuff and that was like also around the same time that that Thundercats reboot came out too. I think. No, I feel the Thundercats was, reboot came out later. Was than it later? That. The, yeah, okay. the Thundercats reboot only came out. I want to say maybe five years ago. You know what? If only we had devices that we could search. <laughs> if only we could just open a page and find the sum of all human yeah. knowledge at our fingertips. Wouldn't it may have been, been wonderful. Like Ten years ago. I know there was like a reboot. I know there was a really cutesy one that just recently came out. That I didn't watch. Uh, 2011. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's Ten years actually ago. quite older than I thought it was. Yeah. A lot yeah. of stuff is blurring for me, like the past 20 years. Like I think it's <laughs> like, like I just realized Lord of the Rings is 20 years old this year. It's like holy crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you get older, time just moves faster. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, the Days nice thing about having. Bye bye. Yeah, the nice thing about having uh, all these streaming services now, and, and this is this is, and I'm sure we'll discuss this sometime in a future podcast about about how different it is that movies get made now. But you have all these IPs just languishing around doing nothing. Yeah, maybe you can't use them as a vehicle to sell toys as much anymore. But like Elton was saying, you can still twinge that nostalgia in people, and you may be able to pick up some subscribers by bringing some of these IPs back, dusting them off. And you couldn't do that before, ten years ago before we had all these streaming services. Now. You've got, I mean, how many streaming services are there now? And each one of them seems to own too a many. piece. Yeah, too, too many, granted. But each one of them has seems to be able to, to secure some type of a licensing agreement for some of these IPs. And yeah, trot them out, man, because it's just on streaming. Like, it's not really costing them that much money. They're already need content to put out. They're hoping to draw on subscribers. So I think you're going to end up seeing more and more and more of this where maybe a big budget movie like snake eyes come out and doesn't do well i think you're going to see that translate to 
maybe a limited series on one of the streaming platforms, maybe a higher end anime series or animation series through the platforms. You have that option now, and you didn't have that up until fairly recently. So I think while you're, the toys are going to die off, I think you're going to see a continuation of more and more of these properties coming back because these IPs aren't doing anything now. Let's see if we can dust them off, make some money, and draw in some subscribers to our streaming service by using them. So to, again, nerds like us that have disposable income and want to subscribe to 30 different streaming services, right? <laughs> so dumb. If you uh, could pick one, one specific IP from back in the day, one cartoon that you loved, and you were going to take that cartoon and turn it into a live action TV show on Disney Plus or Netflix or one of the big ones, what would that be? Inspector Gadget. Oh, that's a good one. Yep, I gotta say, I think it would be. I know there was a live action film, and I think there might have even been a, a sequel to it that maybe didn't have Matthew Broderick there was in it, or maybe a sequel, it did. I think. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it actually had another actor, the guy uh, French something his name. Yeah, is. French Stewart from French from Stewart. Robert That's right. Yeah, I think he actually took over the role. And yeah, I remember trying to get through the first one, and I was like, I hate this so much. <laughs> like, I yeah. just hate this. This is like someone's crapping on my childhood. Um, so, but yeah, I would love to see a, a reimagining on the animated side of, of that show and, and just, you know, you know, updated, updated animation, but still keep the heart of how silly and ridiculous that show was with, you know, all his gadgets always failing and Penny and Brain always be the ones to actually solve the, the crime and, and stop Dr. Claw. Get Frank Walker back. He, he can still do the Dr. Claw voice. It'd be fantastic. That's my pick. I personally want to see Robotech in live oh, action. Dude, please. Like, Please, I, that's. I would like kill for a that. unicorn right now. Oh. Yeah, dude. Oh, now are there legalities surrounding the IP though? Like, does like because that was already kind of a messy IP in the first place? Like, because it was so many broken parts that they try to kind of fit together to make it a palatable show. I know they've like been trying to make something. I think like Toby Maguire was attached to something at some point. Oh, okay. But like, I don't know where it's in limbo right now yeah, essentially yeah, like yeah. i haven't heard anything about it yeah same with the akira live action movie i keep hearing every mm -hmm. now and then someone will happen. pop up and be like oh yeah we're gonna do akira and then it yeah just goes that's away never happening happens. that's a shame it's one of the few enemies i really dug um what about you js what's your what's your one to bring back i you know what i've got a lot of them uh g-force for one now I know there was a Japanese. I know that they don't was, call it G Force over there, but it's Gotcha Man. Gotcha Man. Um, I know there's a Japanese live action G Force movie, yes. uh, which frankly I've I I don't understand it, but I've watched most of the movie. I didn't care if I understood it or not. It was amazing. If I could have a G Force show, a Marvelized style G Force show, or Silverhawks. I don't know what it is about Silverhawks, but Silverhawks was one of those cartoons when I was a kid that from the guitar, electric guitar intro to <laughs> the cool, you know, silver outfits. To, I don't know. There was something about Silverhawks that was very attractive to me. Um, and I just actually, uh, just to go back on that, uh, I feel like cartoons from the 80s had the best intros. Like totally Silverhawks, oh, yeah, Thundercats. Yeah. Totally did. Uh, 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 to a certain extent, Transformers, GI yeah, Joe. Thundercats had one of the best intros yeah. in cartoon history. Yes. As as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Boys, we could sing that song verbatim, Wait, the three of us, right now. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Yeah, dude. They nailed intros back in the day. And you never wanted to skip ahead, and you never, like, you know how they got the skip intro on, on Netflix or whatever? You mm -hmm. would never do that with those yeah. shows. That was part of the experience. 100%. Definitely. Well, you only got to watch it once a week. That too. Now you can watch it. 30 times a day if you want right yeah. um so let's go back to the question i asked at the beginning are in fact the question wasn't that the question was why are 80s cartoons the best i feel like what we should they? have had a control i feel like we should have had a 20 something on this one with us to review <laughs> yeah. the, the old men That's... for like a it's like you a can't... balance of some kind. Like you're asking three guys of the same age, hey, wasn't this cool thing from your childhood cool and way cooler than shit now? Yeah. 
This is a little biased. What was it? And that, I guess, bit. is the question: Is was were were <laughs> cartoons back in the eighties better than they actually are today? Considering like everything we've discussed, right? They were just an engine to sell toys. Um, nowadays, with the demographic being so much different, kids having everything at their fingertips, it's just a different world now. So, can we actually say that cartoons in the eighties were actually the best? No, cooler, yes. Better, no. That's cooler, a good answer, actually. No, it's true because now at least there's an education piece that goes along with them. It's not just endless red and blue lasers, right? Like there's an mm-hmm. actual like they're trying to teach kids morals and ethics and what's right and wrong and self care and all that good stuff that kids need to know growing up now, especially in the society that we're in. Whereas, yeah, but our shows, our shows were way cooler. Of course, they were. Spawned this whole toy and collective thing we've been talking about the whole time, right? Cooler, yeah. Better, yeah. Probably not. But who cares? We we all grew up okay. Who cares? It's fine. Elvin, what do you think? It was a lot of like I when I go back and rewatch some of the like old Transformers episodes and like GI Joe is actually on YouTube, like the old episodes and like I watch it. It's it's cheesy. Uh, there's a lot of like animation errors, but. For me, it's like they really are crap when you rewatch yeah, yeah, them today. It it's it's all it's all nostalgia for me. Like it, like I don't I don't watch these shows as an adult. It just it immediately takes me back to being like ten years old and watching them as a little kid, and that's just part of what keeps me young, you know. <laughs> Hell yeah! And I think both of what you guys said kind of sum it up. At the same time, I'll disagree with both of you because I will say that. Yes, 80s cartoons were the best for me. I don't care what they are to everybody else, but for me, there's nothing like 80s cartoons. Hey, everybody, thanks for t- uh, sticking out through uh, the end, if uh, well, if anybody's even still with us here. Elton, man, thanks for uh, for joining us today. It's is, is really awesome to actually get to meet you. Uh, Thank you for having me. This was oh, any man. Time, awesome. Man. If, if, <laughs> yeah. Anytime you want to come back, we'll have you on. Why don't you yeah, your uh, let everybody know? as far as the collection stuff goes, that's, I mean, we could not have done this one without you. Absolutely. Definitely. It <laughs> just, yeah, just JS, JS and I just flailing about trying to talk on something we don't have a lot of experience with. So <laughs> thank you so much for coming on this one and keeping us on topic and, and, and keeping us informed on that stuff. Is, no yeah, problem, man. No problem. Why don't you uh, let everybody know uh, where they can uh, find you, uh, Instagram, uh, well, any social media, I suppose. Uh, I am at Nerdy Views. Uh, the name is right. Uh, where is that? That right there. There you right go. There, right right there. below you there. <laughs> On and all then, social then. medias: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, if you want to see toys, three D printing, general nerdy stuff, that's where you can find it. Well, you can find it everywhere, yeah. but specifically, nerdy views, nerdy stuff. Okay. You know what? I, I'll admit, I, I love seeing your 3D printing stuff. You always come up with stuff that is a little bit different from all the coasters you do to the... Sometimes it's just simple things that you're, you're 3D printing, and it's always very neat. So uh, everybody, check go, go go check out Elton. Uh, he's got a great Instagram page. Uh, Jeff, we're going to see you next week, bud? Yeah, you're going to see me next week. So uh, you can find me at uh, uh, Messiah Complex Cosplay across all social media. You can also find me at www.messiahcomplexcosplay.com. It's uh, a bit of a placeholder there now. There are some pictures and such. But the goal is you'll be able to see past events, current events, future events, bookings, and even <laughs> laughably merch, which there will never be any. But that is the eventual goal for what you'll be able to find on the website. So, uh, And yeah, you can contact. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to ask, uh, yeah. did you, have you gotten your tickets for Fan Expo yet? Yeah, so tickets, uh, I had tickets for, um, I don't know, Last one of years. the previous events, and then they yeah. just transferred them over. But the hotel is booked for three days, so I'm there all three days. Um, definitely going to do uh, Zack Snyder Superman, definitely going to do Omni Man, probably going to do Spider Man. I'm going to, maybe, it might be a, a Spandex trilogy, and that way I can travel light and keep everything. Keep everything very easy to do. I'm not going to be taking Boromir with. It's just too much to do. And uh, Peacemaker, same thing. It's just there's there's too much, and I don't want to be jammed in trying to get something done quickly in, in time. So, are you going to uh, be that's... doing all three days in costume, or are you going to be doing like one day where you'll be swapping costumes, or how, how are you planning on doing it? Right now, it's it's. For, I don't know about for you, but for me, it's always fluid. Uh, like the last Fan Expo, I was only supposed to do three costumes, and then I got asked to be in a couple of different like group 
things are we had an Austin Powers group on Sunday. So I was number two from Austin Powers Sunday morning. And then we had a watchman group for the afternoon. So I was the comedian for the afternoon, which is quite a costume change between those two. So yeah, it's um, for right now, just the three spandex suits. A walk around in a spandex suit is, is super easy. There's no props, there's no nothing. So that's easy to do. Um, but after that, yeah, who knows? I'm probably going to get a, hey, we're putting together a, I don't know, Titans group or Justice League or Green Lantern. I'll be like, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll bring something, whatever. Let's do it. Awesome. But are you, you're going to go to Fan Expo? Is that your plan right now? I'm, gonna, I'm going to Fan Expo. Uh, I'm going to be there for sure uh, Saturday and Sunday. Perfect. Uh, whether I'm there Thursday night and Friday, I don't know yet. Right, okay. Uh, okay. Actually, I may do Friday and Saturday uh, because Sunday... Sunday is like the last day. It ends early yeah, yeah. and nothing's going on. So I may actually do Friday night or Friday and Saturday. And then into Saturday. There's probably yeah, be yeah. a bunch of parties on Friday night as well and stuff. So it's usually um, the case. Yeah, hunt me down. Hook me. Uh, yeah, show me a message and we'll make sure we. we next get year. And, Sunday and is the dealer room deals. Yeah, that's true. Sunday is the dealer room deal. You're right. Yeah. You're right. right. Um, There's the collector year, coming in at the end there. Get there on Sunday, man. Yeah. Get the deals. Um. Next year, Cosplay Alliance is planning on having a booth at Fan Expo. Oh, good. Nice. Um, so next year will be a little bit of a different experience uh, yeah, for me for sure. anyway. Because uh, I will not only be working the booth at least one day, but I want to actually go and film. Yeah, and actually sure. meet people and film and, yeah. and, and you know bring something else to the channel other than yeah, yeah. just a podcast. Um, so that will be a bit of a different experience this year. Yeah, that will be cool. If I can lose the extra, I won't say how much, how many pounds I've put on, and I actually fit in my Predator, uh, that's going to be one of my costumes nice. uh, for Fan Expo. Mm -hmm. um, not quite sure what the other day will be. We'll see. Yeah, I look forward uh, to getting um, gutted. That's great. Sorry. I look forward to getting gutted. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Well, again, I got to fit in it. Right, yeah, right I now, I don't. <laughs> right now, I'm not even close. Uh, so that's not going to work. Uh, but we are working on a bunch of new electronics for the suit, including nice. sound. So we'll actually Ooh. be able to make Predator screaming and clicking sounds yeah, and all sorts nice. of stuff. So that'll be neat. Nice. Uh, Can't wait. Um, hey, everybody. Thanks again for, for sticking with us, watching through the end. Make sure you click uh, like and subscribe. I mean, the subscription it really helps us out. The like tells us that you're liking the content and you want to see more. I know these podcasts are a little longer than the simple, you know, 15, you know, 10 or 15 minute videos you see online. But... You know, we love that uh, people are sticking to the end, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again next week. Guys, thank you very much for coming again, and uh, like I said, we'll see you guys next week, and uh, hopefully uh, have some other uh, neat topics to talk about. Thanks again, Elton. Jeff, talk see to you guys later. See you next week, buddy. Yep. Thank you.